Hey, it's James Slattery coming out with, with some more SEO trickery. Today, we're going to talk about automation um, in Google Chrome. And uh, this is one of my latest tools of choice uh, for automating things. It's called Browser Automation Studio. Really cool, makes it simple to automate things. There are some bottlenecks, and I hope that I can address a couple of them so you can jump right into this product. It's cheap. It's about 80 bucks a year. Uh, other products that it competes with are $500 to $1,000, and this one cranks out good work. As far as uh, other programs that uh, handle automation, uh, on the lower end, there's iMacros and Macro Recorder. I'm not a big fan of those. On the higher end, Zeno Poster, Browser Automation Studio, and UBot Studio Developer. I mainly use Browser Automation Studio and UBot uh, Studio Developer. UBot Studio Developer, its benefit is that it allows you to package up for resale, and it does a really good job of that. So if you make a bot that is really cool and other people can use it, then you crank it out and you sell it. So here's the Browser Automation Studio window, and it's real simple. These are the tasks that you can add to a, a program. Above this screen are some record buttons um, that can record the tasks that you do inside of the browser window. Here's your program as it's built. Each one of these represents a task, and you can click on these blocks, move them around, and you can edit them. Um, these are the features of Browser Automation Studio. So basically, it has a bunch of icons that once you click them, it says, well, what do you want to do with, you know, brow in, with regards to browsers? And you can load pages, you can resize them, proxies, you know, uh, grab content from the browser, move around to a certain place, scrolling, etc. Script logic is basically for the program. Um, if you want to uh, do conditional logic, meaning if this happens, what do you want to happen? If, this, if that happens, or if you want to do things a certain number of times, if you want to click a button three times or eight times or whatever, uh, you know, visit a site a certain number of times or use a, a a proxy or something or an account a certain number of times this is where you do that script logic um, the tools have two really important parts the log is really important because uh, most of the programs that are made with browser automation studio run headless so they don't run with a browser um, they run multi-threaded and they don't necessarily show you all the browser windows it's uh, actually a difficult feat, feat to actually show the browser windows um, so basically the log is where you would output, Hey, I just did this. And then when you're running the program, you can actually see it. Um, that's when you have a final product while you're building it, you can see it in action. The random number is important because the random number works in combination with reading stuff from files. So obviously if you want to jump around inside of a proxy, uh, list text file, as far as using random proxies, um, you'd use random number and you say read line number 44. The other thing is you can use random number for accounts. You could also use it for random, you know, searches, random, you know, watching of videos, etc. The email is pretty self self explanatory. Uh, it can send and receive email and it does all email features. Uh, the file system read and write files, and uh, do all sorts of cool stuff as far as exporting content, reading stuff in in a certain manner so that it is conducive to your program. Lists are basically flat databases that operate within your within your program as far as setting uh, table elements so that you can uh, save content while you're working and then pull that content back up or export it later. Um, the paid, I'm actually working off of the uh, free version for this demo. And uh, th as you can see, there's additional uh, elements on here as far as uh, features. Uh, XPath, which is great for scraping, um, Excel exports, FTPing of files, that'd be key for uh, doing some cloud work, um, captcha solving, uh, recaptcha solving. Uh, sending and receiving uh, SMS, uh, I'm sorry, just receiving SMS, but it does do phone verification and SQL database, uh, you know, uh, working with that, setting up an SQL database, etc. Now, 
we're jumping into uh, Browser Automation Studio. So uh, this screen is the home screen of Browser Automation Studio. And basically, the record button is where you're going to click 99% of the time. Run is for when you have a finished product. When you click on record, it allows you to either record your keystrokes like a macro to build a program, or you can build it with the blocks. Okay. Uh, the run is really, it just runs your program and all it really shows is the output. And if you haven't configured output, you're not going to see a lot. Um, and it also allows multi-threaded so it can be working on, you know, 10 tasks at a time. One of the problems that people have working with uh, Browser Automation Studio is working with proxies. Proxies are really simple. You get your proxy provider to output your uh, list in an approved format for Browser Automation Studio, which is basically just IP address colon port. The uh, When you uh, want to add a proxy file into Browser Automation Studio, you click on Create Resource, you name it, and I just named the proxy file. That's all you got to do here. Then it asks you what type of uh, resource is it. And as you can see, you can work with a number of different resources, including stuff from the web, um, stuff from a database. This is lines from a file, pull in lines from a file. Next thing is how are you going to work with this? Is it reading? Is it writing? Is it only writing? And is it uh, mixing? Mixing lines means randomly pulling stuff in from the content. This is uh, how often you're going to reuse the content. Um, I The way I code, quote, code my uh, Browser Automation Studio projects, I always say one line at a time, simpler that way. Um, you could do uh, use each line several times. As they say, good for proxies. We're working with proxies, and it works perfectly with one time. Um, you can, uh, say, use, uh, use it a number of times. That's for more complicated pro projects. So if we look at this, not a real complicated project. So this is our window which explains our program. So basically the logic is this. It goes to my IP address dot com. Inside the browser window we're going to see our IP address, our home IP address. It reads a file and it reads it into file content. So the proxy file is the name of the file and it reads it into proxy into file content. Then it sets the proxy. It sets the proxy to the file content which was just read in there. And when you click on these to click when you click up here to uh, say read file, it walks you through exactly how to drop down and I typed nothing. It's that simple. Um, and uh, you set the proxy to file content. So obviously whatever it pulled into the file then it drops it in here, makes it the proxy. And then when we go back to my IP address, we see that it changes. While the program is running, you'll see these uh, separators, they'll light up. So that you know where in the program you're at. There is a step through uh, button in there so that you can, instead of just running the program straight through, it stops. Um, you know, at each at each uh, section of the program, easy. You know, makes it easy for troubleshooting. Um, and as uh, we said, you know, we started up the program. It gives uh, the IP address here. And obviously, that isn't my real IP address. I posted one in there just so that people don't try to uh, do anything silly with IP addresses. And then uh, when the program continues to run, it steps down. And now it changes because it set the IP address for the proxy and it works successfully. That's one of the hardest things to do in Browser Automation Studio. And we accomplished it in four steps. It couldn't be any easier. And if you continued on to do other tasks and you wanted to change the proxy again in the same program, you can do that no problem. You just change the proxy again. Um, I hope and I hope that this gave people a worthwhile uh, introduction to Browser Automation Studio. It's a really cool program. I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, I just think it's really cool and people should be utilizing it more. <clears throat> we should be hearing more about people coming up with bots and you know people selling bots and people sharing bots and say hey you know what i can help you with that because i wrote a bot for it you know i can't even tell you how few times i've heard that in you know my many years in seo uh in the future i hope to uh share you know some things that i've built with ubot with people and uh and i will do a similar video for ubot so that you can compare the two 
U-Bot is really strong. It's much stronger than this, and you know it is very feature rich. So uh, look forward to that video coming soon. And uh, you know if you have any suggestions for any topics that you want me to cover, or you know any questions about stuff that I have covered, leave it in the uh, comments and like and subscribe. When you like and subscribe, it gives me the, you know, get up and go to do the next video. So I, I appreciate that encouragement, and I appreciate your time checking in tonight. Thanks. Bye.